Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at an Emil Busch telescope. This is a 72 millimeter F about 920 millimeters. Uh, and this is uh, dating from uh, the early 1900s, about 1910 to 1920. Something like that is a, is a reasonably good guess. Uh, it's an unusual telescope in many respects. It's German and it has a lot of similarities to Zeiss telescopes from the era. As a matter of fact, apparently the glass from this telescope was sourced from Zeiss, although it was made by Emil Busch uh, in Rathenau. Let me show you some of the more unusual features about this telescope. This telescope uh, is quite unique in many respects and one of the most unusual things is this. There's a wing nut right here, and that wing nut tightens up on the shaft. So I tighten this down, and now voila, I have this at a higher altitude, easier to observe with. As a matter of fact, it's pretty comfortable. You can get up there pretty high. Uh, this thing is a potential disaster waiting to happen. So I designed a, uh, a spring, Put the spring on here, now you have a safety device in case that thing ever uh, accidentally gets released in the middle uh, of the night. By the way, this whole shaft here is actually a reproduction. This shaft, uh, this came when I got the scope, it didn't have that. And normally these are made of, uh, I believe, brass, nickel plated brass. Well, I didn't have anything like that, so I made this out of steel, but it serves the same function and looks almost identical. Anyway, it's got a safety device. Another safety device that I absolutely insist on with these kinds of scope is. Uh, didn't have a triangle, so I put some safety chains on here. And that required modifying the scope to some, a very small extent, putting four, three screws in there. But uh, uh, it's not a big deal to me as far as I'm concerned. That aesthetic is worth sacrificing for the fact that this thing isn't going to go spread eagle and fall down in the middle of the night on me. The same as this device here. Uh, I've had uh, several bad accidents with telescopes. So I've learned my lessons. Uh, those are a couple of very interesting features about this scope. Another thing I wanted to show you about this scope is this. Um, I've got some pictures and I'll show you a picture right alongside this scope in its box, right alongside another scope that's virtually identical in all respects, except it's shorter. It's pretty clear that what the Bush Company did was to use uh, identical components back here in the mount, all that other stuff, and then they just modified um, a 68 millimeter telescope by adding this section here, putting a larger objective and giving it a longer focal length. Um, and they, uh, I've seen other pictures of this same kind of scope, about the same size and so forth, on a different kind of mount. So it's uh, fairly straightforward that that's what they did. They had a variety of different models by doing that, um, by playing that trick. Here's a close-up of the wing nut to show you how that works. It's extremely well made. Very beefy. Everything is very nicely designed. The, the feeling of this scope is very much like a, a Zeiss, sort of a poor man's Zeiss, maybe. Uh, it might be a good description. Uh, what are the... <laughs> very strange things about this telescope is this. If you're going to operate this telescope, you have to have this. This is called a pin wrench. Um, people still use them. Uh, matter of fact, I had another one uh, that I used on a, uh, a grinder, an angle grinder. But for this telescope, you need the pin wrench for this to adjust. Instead of having wing nuts on there, you got those. Now you can really crank some pressure onto those things and you could um, 
you know, you could actually crack the the legs if you're not careful applying too much pressure there. So that's that's one of the things they came apparently with a with a special uh, special wrench pin wrench. Another thing is this right up here. See this that thing? That's a that's just a pad so that when you when the telescope drops, it doesn't bang into that. Right up here on this bearing, that's how you adjust this bearing too, although it really isn't an adjustable bearing, that's just how you remove it, is with a pin wrench. Um, arcane, strange little thing. These are the two standard eyepieces I got with it. Uh, these are, by the way, not 965. These are actually almost exactly 25 millimeters which turns out to be about 98.98 something inches anyway um, so these are too big to fit in a regular 965 um, standard Zeiss kind of a, a star diagonal or whatever so this thing is all a little bit off size these are um, not very good not sure if that's because of how old they are or because of the design they're just really not very good eyepieces uh, although i'm sure they were state-of-the-art for the day because uh, of that difficulty i made this um, i love to tinker on my lathe so making an adapter like this is a lot of fun i made a little adapter so I made this little adapter, and this is a standard Vixen adapter. So I made this little piece in here, and now you can use inch and a quarter eyepieces. This is what the telescope looks like set up for terrestrial mode. Look right through here. If you want to change from terrestrial mode, unscrew this. Now there's this adapter right in here, and then this eyepiece slides in right there. Apparently, there's a note on the inside of the box. Apparently, this at one point had a little tiny prism, right angle prism, that would go on behind the eyepiece. Uh, I'd love to see one of those. It doesn't have it anymore. Uh, but apparently you could then use that and you have a, a star diagonal, but it would have to screw onto the back of the eyepiece. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> kind of uh, charming. I wish I had one of those. Now this bush is set up as a daily driver. Um, that may be a little bit, sound a little ludicrous to you, but uh, this actually is uh, not that bad. I mean, the optics are good. Uh, almost, I think poor man's Zeiss, not, not that bad, uh, not perfect. Uh, there's a little bit of color, but not bad. Again, very, very not bad. It's a very usable kind of a telescope uh, with the inch and a quarter eyepiece adapter and the addition of a finder. This thing doesn't, didn't come with any kind of finder, and believe me, that's a nightmare, folks. It's terrible. Uh, I, and this is just some double sticky tape to put a little uh, a red dot finder on there. It makes things a whole lot easier. The mount is still uh, not, I would say, not ideal. It doesn't have any slow motions, but it's pretty well balanced, and you can use this, and you know, as long as you're not going to a super high power or anything, you're going to be okay with this, and for some you know, for a quick little look, it's, it's not bad. But for a quick little look, uh, it's another downside to this. This has old, old glass that is, uh, uh, well, it takes forever for this to cool down. And it doesn't have any coatings. There's no coatings on the lenses. It does have a little bit of ghosting because of that. Not, not bad. Nothing, nothing terribly serious. But uh, so uh, it's a kind of a, a double-edged sword. It's one of those scopes that is, uh, you know, Okay, I want to go and take it out, and I can pick it up with a couple of hands, take it outside, uh, and uh, if the feet weren't so sharp, I'd, I'd leave it in the living room. Uh, but the feet are very sharp, and they will scratch the heck out of a wood floor. So, uh, but anyway, if it was, you know, uh, under ideal circumstances, you pick it up, take it out, have a look, put it away, no big deal. And if you want to suffer the way the old timers did, 
Then you get out the original <laughs> Huygens eyepieces, put the original adapter on there, and then you're trying to look through the thing straight through. Man, I'll tell you, that is not fun. It's not easy. So much better with a nice uh, set of eyepieces and, uh, you know, a, a decent finder on it. It makes it a uh, much better, much better telescope. Let's take a look at how this whole thing is packed in the box. This box has been really beat up over the, over the years. It's been shipped a couple of times poorly and it uh, just has really taken a beating. But it's still in pretty good shape. It's still hanging together. I had to do a lot of repairs. Uh, first of all, when you look inside the box, there's the scope and all the components. These are the there's a couple of things that I added to it. Didn't have an original pen wrench, a pin wrench, but I was able to buy one of these. And I got those pieces there. So here you have the uh, two eyepieces, right there and right there, and then this, this screws right on here, or of course you can screw on the terrestrial eyepiece, which is right here. That can go on there as well. Either way, let's just set those aside for now. those out as well just to get them out of the way. Now for this part we're going to need to do some assembly. This goes in here. I'm not sure how the original worked but it would have been, you know, the effectively have been the same kind of thing. This now goes on here. So now this is assembled, it's ready to go. Um, it does require the addition of this piece here or the uh, corresponding other, uh, other accessories to go there. And that's how that whole thing goes together. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this Emil Bush 72mm refractor from the early 1900s. Thank you very much for watching.